You're listening to LeaderCast, episode 186. Welcome to LeaderCast, Transforming Missions podcast with Tim Bias and Sarah Thomas, providing you with insights and resources you need to lead a movement of Jesus followers. Sarah, today we're going to have a short conversation about why play? Or maybe I should say it this way. Play? Why? Why do we play? <laughs> play? <laughs> oh, so goodness. Why play? <laughs> yes, folks. Tim and I are having a little too much fun with the themes for these two months. So before we jump into that, let me remind you that you can find show notes for this episode at transformingmission.org forward slash podcast. So before we answer the question, why do we play? Let's answer the question, what is play? So Sarah, you want me to play with this a little bit? (laughs) (laughs) You have too much fun with the sound effects. Yes, I do. So part of what we're talking about in terms of play and then talking about what play is, we would say this, play is time spent without purpose. Do you want to explain what we mean by that? Yeah. So play is doing things just because they're fun and not because they help achieve a goal. And we're going to get to this why, but It's vital to our human development. So, no. Did you need that silly sound effect button? No, you didn't. Why did I do it? Because it's fun. For you. (laughs) Oh, come on. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, we mentioned this on our last episode at the end. When we think about play... It's really at the core of who we are as creative people, as innovative people, and it can mean a lot of things. So it might mean swimming, or it might mean doing puzzles. Think about the things that you lose track of time and self-consciousness. Those are the moments that are filled with play. So when you look at your watch and go, or look at your phone in my case, and go, oh my gosh, it's been two hours. That's a moment of play. So in those moments, you might think about them as moments of clearing. That's where ideas are born. Now, if you think about play, whether it's swimming or riding a bike or playing a board game, whatever is play for you, now think about it the world that we live in without play, where there isn't laughter, there's no hide and seek as a kid, no board games, no baseball games or football or soccer, not even lacrosse or running or walking as fun. (laughs) No card games, no playgrounds, no swimming pools. That all sounds pretty miserable to me. It does to me too. (laughs) So... Let's not confine play to vacation or to one specific activity, but instead let's remember that we're designed to play. And now let's answer that question. Why is it, Tim? Why why play? Well, Sarah, you've helped me understand as we've discovered that we play because we're created to play, or we can't be fully human and and competent without play. And maybe from my perspective, it's because it just happens to be fun. Yeah. And, and Tim's not just saying those things. Those are three things that Dr. Stuart Brown, who researches play. Can you imagine having that job? How fun would that be? You research play. I laughed all day long. (laughs) Yeah. I interrupted you. Go ahead. You're on a roll. No, no, it's fine. Let's unpack that just a little bit more. As Tim walked through those, underneath that is the reality is is that play strengthens our mind and our body. 
It enhances the, our social interaction and our competencies around social interactions. It provides emotional stability and physical capability. And this one seems like a stretch, but Dr. Brown's research points to this. Play also strengthens our ability to be successful. So what's happened? Is it that we we don't play? And so because when I think about those things and I think about the people in my life and the people that we work with, the things that get in our way is we're mentally exhausted, something is physically wrong with us. We're having trouble with relationships and people. Um, we're not understanding a social situation. There's not effectiveness. Now, I'm giving you negative examples now, but I'm pointing to those things because could it be that one of the things that is contributing to our decline and the challenges that, that we experience is there isn't that time for rest, relaxation, and what we're talking about today, play. And so in a very real way, we're suffering and we're doing harm to ourselves, which sounds ridiculous when, we talk, when we're talking about play. But Sarah, I think one of the things that we've done is to uh, put things in compartments in our lives so that work and play are just two different parts of life. And what we're talking about is actually integrating them. Oh, to be a person of integration, <laughs> integrity, that it, that it comes together. One of the questions I've asked myself as I've grown older and matured is that, do I feel foolish getting on the floor playing with my granddaughters? I think there are pictures even on Facebook of me at a tea party with my uh, youngest granddaughter a few years ago. I, I don't remember feeling foolish until I saw the picture. But at the time, quite frankly, it was energizing because it was fun watching her. And it was fun receiving what, what, she, what was coming to me because of her and, and, and her whole imagination. And I think that's what we have given up with play isn't our own imaginations, but what we can receive just by other people and their imaginations. Yeah. So part of what I'm hearing you suggest, Tim, is that at some point we stop playing. You even said it. I, I didn't feel foolish until I looked at the picture. I'm not remembering that picture, but I'm thinking of similar pictures what runs through my mind when I see pictures like that is what a beautiful picture of a grandfather and a granddaughter. What a fun moment that is. So why is it that we feel foolish when we see pictures of ourselves doing that? And, and I would say, and this is just my opinion, it's nothing more, that at a certain age, we're told to sit down at the dinner table, to get in line, to sit still, to stop playing with your food, just eat. And as you said, Tim, work and play get separated out in our life. And so maybe the homework for this episode is spend some time with a child and remember what it means to play. I think there was something about Jesus saying, unless you, you see the world as a child or as you come as a child, I, I don't think that was anything other than just the, just the idea that you could come just as you are. And, and, and you don't have to have all the inhibitions and all the, the things that get in the way. And I'm saying this for me because I'm very, at my worst, I'm very self-conscious. And, and so wondering what people might think or how they might feel or whatever. At my worst, at my best, I can be who God created me to be. And I can allow the people around me to become, to feed me. And part of that is the play or the interaction of, of just us being who we're, who we're supposed to be. And I think that's part of what the research says, isn't it? Isn't that what you were pointing out? Yeah. One of, one of the reasons that we play is, and you're pointing to it, Tim, is it's an important part of belonging. 
It's the basis of community cooperation and altruism. The thing that comes to mind for for me is because it's summertime and so often in the summertime there are mission trips that happen. And when I think back to taking groups of teenagers on mission trips in the summertime, they were long days that we were working hard. And I'm thinking of some of the experiences that we had that we were either building something or serving with people in, let's say, a soup kitchen, and something needed to happen in preparation, and that all got interrupted because somebody stops by with popsicles. (laughs) And what happens is everybody stops to eat a popsicle and then what happens is your hands are all sticky and you know people start touching one another because they're teenagers and that's what teenagers do and then somebody finds the hose and what happens with the hose (laughs) somebody starts squirting somebody else and the next thing you know everybody is laughing and they might be soaking wet but they dry off quickly because it's so bloody hot outside what happened in that moment it was play But what else happened in that moment was it was a moment of building community and creating belonging because they had an experience together. It was a silly experience, but there was an experience together. So play's not just about blowing off steam or letting out that excess energy. It does that. But (laughs) the benefits of play impact our life in ways that until I started digging into play and the research behind play, I was like, I'll confess, I was with you, Tim. You know, okay, this is frivolous. But what I'm recognizing is how important it is to our well-being that we do play and that there are moments of fun. So being shaped, I I keep using the words, into the people that God created us to be, what you just talked about are experiences that that actually shape our lives and our memories that we have years down the road. The very people we have those experiences with are people that we, when we see them again, say, do you remember when? And you begin to experience that all over again, because it's that, that is that bringing back together that remembering and and you know play is one of those things where where there are no where the inhibitions are down and so we actually bec- we actually live more like we are or who we who we are right and and it's more fun i mean at, at, that we're talking about fun but there's an intimacy with that it, it, in terms of the belonging the relationships that we have and the int- intimacy that I'm talking about is a deeper level of that relationship that goes that goes on beyond just that moment or just that experience. And, and I, I don't think that it's a stretch to say play is play is difficult if there aren't close relationships. To use your word, intimate relationships with people. Because there are inhibitions that are there if there isn't a relationship. Now, I think play can build relationships because I've seen it, I've seen it happen. But this is where a le- being a leader comes in. You have to be willing to take the lead to step into something that may be fun, may be a little bit silly. Where Where is... Where is that play in in your day? So here's one question for you this week. What will you spend time doing without purpose? Now, for those of you that might have the Achiever Clifton Strength, and I know there are a lot of you because it's number one in the United States, no anxiety attacks here. Let me reframe it for you. Your goal is to spend time playing. Put play on your to-do list might be another way to say it. The purpose is to do something that is fun, that does not have a goal. And another quote from Stuart Brown is this, the opposite of play is not work. The opposite of play is depression. 
Well, Sarah, before we leave everyone with uh, the write it down and talk it out play assignment, there's an additional benefit to play. And I think we've included that on the website. You, you've got. Yeah, there's a whole, a whole list of benefits. So head over to the show notes page and you will, you will see that there. So here's your write it down, talk it out, or just play suggestions for this week. First one is create a playlist. What activities can you do for hours on end? Write it down. So when you come to that moment and think, okay, we need some play, you have your your go-to list. Now, put it on your calendar. Some of you won't need to do this. Many of you will. So that one's optional. Here's the third one. Include somebody else in it because play is a heck of a lot more fun when you're with people, as we've pointed to in this episode already. Any last thoughts, Tim, before we say goodbye to our folks today? I think, Sarah, the only thing I'd say is I'm having fun and I hope everyone else is too. Well, once again, you can find... Oh, goodness. See, hearing Tim say things like that, it just makes me laugh. (laughs) Here's your final reminder. You can find show notes at transformingmission.org forward slash 186. And remember, who you are is how you lead. Bye for now. What was that knock-knock joke, Tim? Who's there? Euripides. Euripides who? Euripides, these pants. (laughs) You're going to be in trouble. (laughs) We've just given you a teaser for next time. No, we're not spending an entire episode telling knock-knock jokes. Tune in and find out what we are talking about. Bye. (laughs) Bye.